Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. James Dean and Marlon Brando were in a relationship that bordered on sadistic. Rumours about the sexuality of both Hollywood icons are nothing new. The two screen icons revolutionised movie acting in the 1950s and over the years their private lives have become as legendary as their on-screen performances. How Marlon Brando played with James Dean for his own amusement. Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Marlon Brando and James Dean were in a kinky relationship. Dean and Brando participated in master-slave roleplay. The craft of acting was seriously challenged in the late 1940s. Acting coaches like Stella Adler, Lee Strasberg, Uta Hagen, Sanford Meisner and Viola Spolin developed techniques, many based on the teachings of Stanislavski, Marlon Brando and James Dean are prime examples of actors whose dedication to these techniques remain influential. No one ever burst on the scene and made as big an impact as Marlon Brando, a student of Stella Adler. He appeared in the original Broadway productions of I Remember Mama, Truck Line Cafe and revivals of Antigone and Candida, for which he received good notices. However, on December the 3rd, 1947, at the Ethel Barrymore Theatre, Brando played Stanley Kowalski in Tennessee Williams' landmark drama A Streetcar Named Desire. The rest is history. Brando brought a natural energy and style audiences had never seen before, and it quickly became the quest for every actor of the period. While living in New York, Brando maintained an odd but fascinating lifestyle. He shared an apartment with his childhood friend Wally Cox and annoyed many by keeping a raccoon as a pet. Brando moved to Hollywood, never returning to the stage. Streetcar was filmed by Elia Kazan with the original cast with one exception. Vivian Lee, who had played Blanche in London, played the role on screen. Lee, Hunter and Malden were honoured with Oscars. Brando was not. He'd be honoured for his performance in On the Waterfront in 1954. He then appeared in Julius Caesar, Viva Zapata, The Wild One, Guys and Dolls and Sayonara. His iconic performance as Johnny Strabler in The Wild One is a classic image of the 1950s. Method teacher Lee Strasberg tried taking credit for Brando's fame and technique, but the actor dismissed him. His mentors were Stella Adler and Elia Kazan. The new wave of the 1960s brought artistic challenges. Brando wasn't invited to participate. The only film he directed and starred in, the western One-Eyed Jacks, was a failure. The 1962 remake of Mutiny on the Bounty was next. Much of the filming occurred on a small island in French Polynesia. Brando bought the island, and this was his home for decades. A lack of challenging roles caused Brando to realise that acting was now just a means of paying for the island and the support of his 16 known children. Everything changed in the 1970s as character roles came his way. There was Don Corleone in The Godfather, which brought him his second Oscar. On the other side, James Dean was the cultural icon. He had a Quaker upbringing, Reverend James de Weird became his mentor and allegedly his first lover. His good looks got him noticed immediately. He played the disciple John in Hill No. 1, an Easter television presentation. After a few minor film roles, he moved to New York where he appeared in television dramas and took classes at the actor's studio. While in New York, he got good notices for The Immoralist, based on a novel by André Gide. The play ran for 96 performances, then Hollywood called and, of course, Dean answered. Elia Kazan wanted a younger Brando type to play Cal Trask in his film adaptation of John Steinbeck's East of Eden. His next film, Rebel Without a Cause, would prove to be his most iconic. Rebel Without a Cause spoke to its audiences and perfectly captured how a generation of teenagers experienced the 1950s. James Dean will be forever remembered for his performance in this movie. 
On September 30th, 1955, James Dean Forever became a classic icon of 1950s Hollywood. He crashed his Porsche Spider and died at the age of 24. At that time, East of Eden, the only film he had a leading role in, had been released. The film is shot in deep, rich technicolour by cinematographer Ted D. McCord. East of Eden is a brilliant film. Following his death, questions of his personal life began to surface. William Bast, Dean's roommate and biographer, claimed he and Dean had been lovers. Dean dated several women and one of his lovers is generally thought to be Ursula Andress, so memorable in Dr. No, whom at the time was also dating Brando. Living as they did in very difficult times, the two actors hid their relationships with men outside of the Hollywood community that knew about their private lives. Dean and Brando were not alone among prominent homosexual or bi actors, then known outside of Hollywood as entirely straight male icons. Dean avoided military service on the grounds of his sexuality, but when questioned by others, he provided a more nuanced reply, suggesting he was bisexual. No, I'm not a homosexual, but I'm also not going to go through life with one hand tied behind my back. Dean was among a number of Brando's boyfriends. In his Brando Unzipped, biographer Darwin Porter tells us, James Dean was one of Brando's most lasting yet troubled relationships. They had a relationship for a number of years, but it was always turbulent. Both men paid each other a visit to the film set of a production one was working on. Brando was seen with Dean on the set of East of Eden. Then likewise, James Dean visited Brando during the production of Desiree. There is no evidence to suggest that they were friends or even friendly acquaintances. Their interaction seems to have been no more than a couple of social gatherings. Dean respected another brooding actor of the day, Marlon Brando. While Dean was just emerging in Hollywood, the slightly older Brando had major success as Stanley Kowalski in A Streetcar Named Desire. His iconic role as a motorcycle gang leader in The Wild One, and he won an Oscar for On the Waterfront. Dean attempted to call Brando and see him socially, but Brando rebuffed his attempts at a friendship. I gave him the name of a psychoanalyst and he went, at least his work improved, Brando said. James Dean and Marlon Brando reportedly had a secret sadomasochistic relationship sparked by Brando's desire for control. Daily Mail reported that the unidentified book states that the two actors would partake in master and servant style sessions. Rumours that kind of relations existed between the friends have long persisted. In 2006's Brandon Unzipped, Darwin Porter presented Brando to readers in a different light, revealing that the bisexual thespian slept with several male actors and directors. Porter claimed that Brando, aside from Dean, also had these relationships with Cary Grant, Montgomery Clift and John Gielgud. However, Porter wrote that, out of all the relationships, Dean was Brando's most lasting yet troubled one. But a book called James Dean, Tomorrow Never Comes, claims specific details from the early 1950s. A friend of Dean, Stanley Haggart, who was interviewed for the book, says that Brando used to play mind games with Dean, who was seven years his junior, and reportedly idolised the older actor. The book is based on conversations with sources and veteran gossip journalists who had known Dean before his death. They reveal that the first time Brando met Dean was not on the set of East of Eden in 1954, as he claimed in his own memoir, Songs My Mother Taught Me. Instead, it was in 1949 when, after an extended stay in Paris, Brando flew back to New York to make a public appearance at the actor's studio, where he had studied under Strasbourg. Following his lead role in A Streetcar Named Desire on both the stage and the screen, Brando was being idolised and wanted to give a speech at his alma mater. At the back of the audience was a young man who Brando would later describe to Bobby Lewis, one of the founders of the actor's studio, as staring at him so intently he felt my skin burning. Brando thought that Dean had a childlike sincerity and thought Dean was in love with him, and he was right. Afterwards, Dean introduced himself by telling Brando 
that he was his greatest fan, and that he was confused about many things, but not confused in my admiration for you. The two men made small talk about Dean's ability to predict days that people would die. He got his own wrong. Before a long pause, when they looked into each other's eyes, Brando leaned in and kissed him, the book says. But it was quite apparent from their celebrity friends, who included playwright Tennessee Williams, composer Alec Wilder, and Rogers Brackett, a Manhattan advertising executive, who was Dean's on-off boyfriend. I really believe that Jimmy fell in love with Brando that year. As for Brando, I don't think he ever loved Jimmy. I met Brando only three times, and each time he was with Jimmy. In my opinion, Brando was in love with Brando, Alec Wilder. When Dean would meet up with Brando, he would reportedly request it to be burned by cigarettes. It is also reported that Brando, the older and dominant one in the relationship, would make Dean view him having an intimate moment with strangers, all part of a twisted mind game. I got the impression that Jimmy was engaged in a cat-and-mouse affair with Brando, with Brando being the cat, of course, Haggart claims in the book. Brando seemed to be toying with Jimmy for his own amusement. I think Brando was using Jimmy, who followed him around like a lovesick puppy with his tongue wagging. The two were said to have a turbulent relationship for several years. According to Contact Music, Brando and Dean had a major public fight over Brando's other male romantic interests at a Santa Monica, California party. Brando elaborated on his predicament. Marlon had a bit of a fling with Cary Grant, spending a weekend with him in San Francisco. Cary was also pursuing the actor Stuart Granger, who became another of Marlon's conquests. Marlon admired John Gielgud, but they didn't have a relationship. Rather, Brando performed exact favours for Gielgud and told friends, I owed it to him because he really helped me with lines in Julius Caesar. While James Dean has been rumoured to have slept with men as well as women, interviewed by Gary Carey for his The Only Contender, Brando stated, Homosexuality is so much in fashion it no longer makes news. Like a large number of men, I, too, have had homosexual experiences, and I am not ashamed. I have never paid much attention to what people think about me. Brando never reciprocated Dean's love and played a game with his younger lover for his own amusement. Friends said that Dean was like a puppy dog who would loiter outside Brando's apartment in the cold in the desperate hope his idol would invite him in. Dean and Brando were two of the icons of their generation, but their dark personal currents drew them together. The two men both studied under acting coach Lee Strasberg. They were both discovered by director Elia Kazan, and they were both intense, brooding characters. In some ways, Dean was considered the successor to Brando and only got his roles in Rebel Without a Cause and East of Eden because Brando turned them both down. But their relationship was far more complex than had been thought. Brando reportedly had a desire to be in control. Dean is said to have told that Brando was completely in charge of our lovemaking. I got to make love to Brando, which is something I've been longing to do ever since I first heard about him. He told me what he wanted, and I went along for the ride. Stella Adler, the actress and acclaimed acting teacher, said that after that she saw Brando everywhere with Dean. Wilder said they were definitely a couple. Of course, the word sexual fidelity would be unknown in each of their vocabularies. He kept me abreast of the affair. Dean ditched his trademark white t-shirt and jeans and started to dress smarter and more like Brando. Dean and Brando's personal demons are reportedly what brought them together. They both continuously battled individual demons. In Listen to Me, Marlon, a movie compiled from 200 hours of Brando's tapes, the actor admits to hating his father and his work in A Streetcar Named Desire, almost leading to him having a breakdown. In Songs My Mother Taught Me, Brando wrote about his old man's emotionally abusive tendencies. I was his namesake, but nothing I did ever pleased or even interested him. He enjoyed telling me I couldn't do anything right. He had a habit of telling me I would never amount to anything. Dean's personal demons were something he fought with up until his fatal car accident. They were apparent in a letter 
He stated the following into then-girlfriend Barbara Glenn, I want to die. Before you get too excited, we should probably mention that the co-authors of this latest Brando Dean expose are Danforth Prince and Darwin Porter, who are notorious for having created a cottage industry of completely fabricated stories about dead actors. In his memoir, Marlon denied that any such relationship ever happened, and that James was never a friend of mine. Not only that, he said that young star had an idée fix about me, but nothing more. Danforth Prince and Darwin Porter have written a number of books on the sex lives of old Hollywood stars who are no longer around to respond to the claims, meaning they should perhaps be taken with a pinch of salt. Nevertheless, these kind of rumours have always surrounded Dean and Brando. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. What do you think about Marlon Brando and James Deans's relationship? Please do not forget the fact that these rumours have never been confirmed.